Hey, it's the Gooch. You know what? We've got talking with Taylor. We've got the Rosen Report, but nothing better than talking with Warren Saku about baseball. He's our baseball expert. <laughs> yes, he is. Love Warren. And uh, there's lots to talk about. What a good looking start. I don't want, you know, as in Toronto, uh, Raptors win last night. Incredible win. Toronto won last night. Incredible win. Blue Jays win. Incredible win. How many parades are we going to have this year? Why don't we just combine them to a three for one? That would be kind of cool. And then we wouldn't have to worry about it. if one falls off. No big deal. Hey, listen, I'm really excited about today's show. Thank you for joining us. It's lunch with Gooch and friends. And this is one of my friends. We will be talking to him about the Blue Jays. So don't get excited. Caden Primo has been called up to take over Price as a backup role, of course, for Jake Allen. But it's an important move. Obviously, you know, Caden Primo is the son of Keith Primo, who is uh, one of our uh, partners in crime. So we're really excited about that. And I'll tell you what, the kid does deserve it. Uh, he's looking great. And we'll talk to our producers right after we uh, go through baseball with Warren. We'll ask him about his Toronto Maple Leafs too, because we know he likes those guys. And then we'll really get into, obviously, uh, a little bit of hockey right after we uh, finish off with baseball. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, brought to you by the Hockey News and Sports Illustrated. Should be baseball news because it's all Warren Saku. Warren, what's going on? Hey, uh, enjoying baseball, uh, getting to see the uh, Jays in action. It's always a good thing when the season starts. Can't watch it uh, face-to-face uh, like we uh, they did in Texas, but uh, that's okay. We don't mind enjoying from the uh, from the cheap seats. Yeah. Every time you come on, you're always so happy and so bubbly. You got the hair looking good. You got the glasses. You just look sharp. Well, so, if the gel I, wasn't in there, trust me, it'd be hanging down here. It's uh, <laughs> Hey, at least we got it, right, Gooch? At least yeah, we got it. <laughs> exactly. You should look at Val's hair. Holy crap. Looks like a scarecrow on a bad day. Hey, listen, really excited about – obviously, let's touch on the uh, – on. Um, let's touch on the uh, – the Toronto Maple Leafs really quickly, because I know you're a big fan. So your thoughts so far? Boy, to what? Uh, just under 20 games left to go. Uh, big push uh, down to the end. Uh, what? Every every game could be four-point swing, right? Uh, I love it. Uh, I love the fact that uh, they're up in the north. Uh, wait, the Scotiabank uh, North Division. Is that the official? There we go. Scotiabank North. No, uh, no, 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 no. Hang on. I don't think so. I think it's... Um, oh, did it slip? I'm sorry. Oh, Maybe the lead it. singer from uh, uh, Tragically Ill Hip. How could I... Gord Downing <laughs> Division. No, I think it is. Oh, Trent, really? Can you just verify? I think it's called the okay. Gord Downing North Division. I could be mistaken, but oh, I think okay. I saw that. Well, that All would right. be very nice if it is. Uh, listen, yeah. uh, no better testament to a true Canadian um, in Gordami. So uh, regardless, I, I think this is now the time where uh, teams are getting themselves uh, playoff ready. Um, I, I, I When I looked at the Leafs early in the season, and yes, they got off to a quick start, but then I saw them losing you know, defensive metrics like block shots, uh, you know, some of the um, – uh, penalty kill, uh, some of the areas where uh, a holistic team play comes into effect. You know, I liken it in baseball to doing some of those things that you don't always, you know, want to do or like to do, get a guy over, hit a sack fly to get a guy in, kind of sacrifice yourself for the team. I think this team, you know, is kind of coming together in that uh, perspective. I know Joe Thornton would be one of those individuals that would harp on that. And, you know, this is where a team, although with a bunch of young superstars, would rely on a Joe Thornton now with that playoff experience and that maturity. And, and listen, there's no doubt that there's gifted players at the top of the lineup, but a gifted team just doesn't make a championship team. And so to me, uh, playing together and knowing your role, understanding, you know, what you do and what you do well and not trying to get out of that, that's how this team will be successful to me. Uh, it sounds like the players are loving 
uh, getting the competition against, you know, nine or 10 games against each team in the division. I think what it does is it starts to give you that understanding, you know, two, three nights in a row playing the same team, uh, just a better gut feel rather than playing them once and then playing them, you know, later on in the season. That's what I'm hearing, at least from the players that they're talking. And uh, boy, I can't wait till some playoff hockey comes. And, you know, I'm a Leaf fan. So obviously it's been a long time. Uh, uh, I haven't been on this earth as long. Uh, I wasn't on this earth when they last won the Stanley Cup. So, uh, Gooch, I'll be looking for them to at least get to uh, deep into the playoffs this year. Well, I was, and I remember very vaguely the black and white. I don't, I can't say that I want, I remember the, because I was in Winnipeg and the signal obviously wasn't that good. Hey, listen, I'm getting beaten up. <laughs> Paul Rosen saying, Gooch, it's not the, the Gord Downing. And then I got, uh, obviously, the boys. Somebody said we should fire Kerry and Jordan and I should take over the show. It is the Scotia Bank. North or Scotia North Division. I apologize. I did hear reference, and I think Paul mentioned it. Somebody did make reference of it, and what a tribute it should be. I love Scotia Bank. You're wonderful. What you're doing for hockey, but Gord Downing uh, North Division would be right now. Nobody more iconic than him. And then of course Honda is for the West. Uh, we've got Discover for the Central, and we have Mass Mutual for the East. And I loved the helmets last night. One said Rogers, one said Bell. So I'll tell you what, this is just getting so exciting. Yeah. I'm confused. Hey, listen, I wanted to, you know, I've been, I'm not harsh on the Toronto Maple Leafs. I, I am not a, a, a Leafs um, hater by any means. I love hockey. I'm a little bit biased to the Winnipeg Jets, but I can, as I know you can too, when you look at the Blue Jays, I know you how much you love them, but you can be objective and say this, and, you know, we're going to believe you. And I played a little bit of hockey, so I can I can spout my, my voice off, and people can say you're an idiot and all that sort of stuff. That's great. You're not winning championships right now. You're winning them at the end. So if, if somebody like me, if, if you said to me today, listen, the Blue Jays got a really good shot at winning the World Series, and here's why I think, because I played the game and I see this and I see that, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to you because I know you know your stuff. Mm -hmm. If I say something about hockey, I don't have all the answers, but I've been a coach, a general manager. Yes, not at the NHL level. I'll give everybody that. But I've actually, when you take down the levels, and you can say that from the NHL, to the AHL, to the East Coast League, as it would be in the MLB. I don't know all the different uh, triple A, uh, double A, you name it. Yeah. yeah, it's not much different, and the philosophies are not that far apart. So, no. my point in, I did get hard on uh, Matthews, and I'm gonna, I, I, I'm man enough to be able to step up. I still don't think he's playing at the level he can. I think he can raise his game. But last night, I got to give him. He scored when they needed him the most to score. I love Galchenyuk. Listen, uh, Wayne Simmons has been a huge addition. He was a, a firecracker to being off the last couple of games. He's playing better. This team needs secondary scoring, as you said. So all I was saying is they need their best players to be their best players. And I'll tell you what, Marner and Matthews are there. There's no question. And I love Hyman. And then the final part I'm going to ask you before we get into baseball, Jack Campbell is mm -hmm. being – having a season like no other. And I know Paul and I've had this conversation. Um, he is outstanding at nine and oh right now. That is fantastic. You're not winning the Stanley cup right now. And my only concern that I kept saying, guys, if Anderson, this is great. It's the best scenario you could have for the Toronto Maple Leafs because it's going to raise Anderson's game. When he comes back, the only way he's getting back in the net is if he doesn't have some of the miscues he's had. Right. So I'm, I'm excited about that. I think that if he comes back and can play the way he can play and Jack Campbell stays where he's at, the, the goaltending situation is good. I'm just worried about the frailty of both of those goaltenders and if they are the guys that will take them to the promised land. So that's it. Your thoughts. Uh, listen, uh, Jack Campbell, I, I did a little bit of homework on him. I want to think I'm not sure exactly how old he is. I don't know if he's 29, uh, but, you know, he's kind of been a journeyman goalie um and and i'm just hearkening back to teams that rode on the back of hot goalies you know to take them through the playoffs and you know pittsburgh we've seen that we've seen um uh las vegas ride flurry kind of with a uh, renaissance when he went out there i like the fact that a goalie is not necessarily carrying baggage and 
you know, maybe doesn't have all that, all that previous um, expectation on him. And he's just out there in his element. I mean, you have seen players, whether it's basketball, I've seen it in baseball, where a dominant starting pitcher uh, absolutely walks right through. I mean, last year, you looked at uh, individuals like Willie Adamas uh, for Tampa Bay that were out of their tree um, in performance. And, and listen, it's a special player that is allowed to or allows himself to park that mental baggage and to just stay in the present. And one thing that I will say is that it's one thing to get an opportunity. It's another to recognize it and make the most of it and not overcomplicate it. And I won't say Freddie Anderson is doing that, but listen, we all as athletes get to a threshold and to elevate over and above. Sometimes it takes a bit of a shakeup. So if Jack Campbell is giving him a little bit of impetus to be better, or even if Jack Campbell happens to be that lightning hot goalie, a red hot goalie that the Leafs follow, what's wrong with that, right? Like uh, it's happened no. before, it's been proven. I don't see why it can't happen. I'm not getting ahead of myself, nor for Jack Campbell. I'm just relating it to other sports and what I've seen other individuals do. And those feed off, uh, especially an important position like a goaltender uh, for a team. I've seen that happen in other sports. And, uh, you know, it can be quite magical. And you can ride that that red carpet all the way to the end. Hey, listen, Paul Rose is coming up at 4 o'clock. Obviously, the Rose Report with Dan Berlin. But I just, uh, Paul and I loved uh, having chats. Dan Berlin. He's actually oh, been my a- gosh. Say hi to Dan Berlin. I haven't seen Dan yeah. Berlin in ages. Good man. Okay. Well, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Looking forward to it. And, uh, you know, Rosie and I don't agree with everything, but the last couple of shows, we've been on par. Like, it's been unbelievable, him and I. So I'm going to throw this one out at you. You know, with Campbell as hot as he is right now in goaltending, you always want your goaltender right at the beginning of the playoffs uh, coming with that hot hand. We saw Hutchinson, what he did for Carolina last year. Don't forget Demko, hotter than a firecracker. We didn't Mm -hmm. think he was going to be. Uh, Kudobin, we're not going home, right? He was outstanding for Dallas, and it was at a time when they needed him most. Um, and in every career, we all know it. It doesn't matter how great you are, you're going to have that ebb and flow. And I just hope that we don't tire out Campbell and our buddy Anderson comes in, levels it. Hey, listen, Hutchinson came in and did exactly what he needed to do. So I think when it comes to goaltending, Lee fans, I think I've made uh, restitution. I, I I am saying the Leafs have a good shot at going deep in the playoffs. Just a little bit question mark on the health of the goaltenders. That's it. I'm leaving it. There you go. Let's go to Blue Jays. Yesterday, I heard this. Oh, look what's just popped up. I love Shane. How are you, Shane? Haven't seen you in a while. Oh, oh, Mighty the banner. <laughs> now, love banner. My boy. Now, Ro- Robert, Robert, I love the banner. Yeah. He's a yeah. great guy. I've only yes. met him a couple times in my past. But what about this? Um, do you mean Q from Star Trek? <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at I'm getting All right, Let's get on this baseball, Gooch. Come I said on. Carolina. You're right. I, I thought I said Colorado. I'll go back and check the film. Sorry, Paul. You're right. It uh, it is Cor- uh, Hutchison was Carolina uh, for Colorado. Whatever. Go Jays, go. All right, here we go. I want to say this before we get started in the baseball. Uh, the one thing, I've been watching all the games, so uh, give me tribute. Paul has has made sure that I keep uh, polishing my baseball up. The one thing I want to say is there's a guy that's playing, I think, in the outfield, but he's hitting the ball like crazy right now. And uh, I know his last name's uh, Gritchick. Yep, Randall Gritchick. Gritchick. Yeah. I you love this guy. I love his attitude. But the one guy that's really blown me away is Merriweather. All right. So both individuals. And did you did I hear you say you're pushing your balls or your baseballs? Okay, just checking. Um, first <laughs> hang of, on, disclaimer. Julian disclaimer. Julian Merriweather. All right. Here here's a story of a, a young pitcher who's often been injured and is now getting an opportunity. It's um kind of the Wally Pip, you know, uh, uh, opportunity to get in. And before you know it, uh, you know, he's got a position maybe as one of the uh, one or one A closers on this uh, for this Jays organization. Jordan Romano, I would call him your one, but Merriweather right now is a one A. 
one thing about him is health has always been a bit of an issue. But boy, when you look at 100 to 100 plus and then 80 miles per hour on the changeup, that differential right there is staggering. You can see some of the swing and miss. Because the arm angle and because of the arm speed, Gooch is one of the biggest things in baseball. So the deception for a hitter is always on timing. And what are you looking for? As a hitter, you're looking for that ball and you're looking to see where it's being released from. But is anything changing? Is anything different? And when a pitcher can throw with the very same arm motion and arm speed, yet he allows his grip to be the changing determination on the speed, that's where you start to get swing and miss and you get what they call a Bugs Bunny uh, changeup or a curveball for that matter, just something off speed. Now, Mariano Rivero did it with one pitch and that was because of the tremendous break, you know, at that sharp end on his fastball. Like not many can just throw one pitch and be that dominant, uh, but Love what I saw there. I mean, that's exciting to see that Kirby Yates goes down. Nobody likes to see that. But they spent $5 million on Yates. He's out for the season. Merriweather comes in bargain basement pricing. And, you know, I follow a lot of baseball analysts. And, you know, I listen to a lot. And one I like to listen to is uh, David Sampson, the former um, president of the Montreal Expos and then the Florida Marlins. And, you know, as a front office executive, he always said, we're going to excel, and they had to uh, find a way to excel with a, a small payroll in Florida or Miami now, as they're called, um, is getting players to overachieve uh, based on what they're being paid, so their salary. So you want a bunch of overachievers to basically be making 700 to a million to $5 million and then overachieving on that and extending themselves. And when you get a number of players like that and you get some young players that step up or you get free agents that come in or you get – you know, the Stephen Matzes of the world who threw yesterday that have a chip on their shoulder that say, I'm better than what I demonstrated in uh, New York with the Mets. This is an or this is now how you start to build a winning team. And, uh, you know, they got a number of young players, young assets that are not costing them a lot of money. And therefore, if they get that production and they can do that over a full season, this is how you have the opportunity uh, to win a championship. So nice to see Merriweather. And then on the Gritchick side, Gritchick uh, outfielder, his actually hitting coach for the St. Louis Cardinals, George Greer, back a few years ago, was my Wake Forest head coach when I played baseball. So I got to know Randall through the introduction of Coach Greer and got to meet him and fabulous individual. Here's another player that's reinventing his swing year after year. He's, he's actually taken some, I'll call them unnecessary habits and areas in his swing that kind of lengthen his swing. He shortened it. You look how quick he is to the bat. I think he fouled off like seven pitches before he hit that home run, a big home run in New York, you know, and he can do it all over the field. So, you know, they talked about him as potentially being a, a trade uh, asset. He still may be, but boy, I tell you, he's demonstrated that he's got you know, double digit home run power in the American League East, and he's revamping himself. I think that plays very nicely, especially with the way injuries will factor into the season uh, because yeah. of a short one last year, that they're going to need that versatility. And nice to have a grit chick, um, you know, once again, chip on his shoulder, something to prove to his former team, the St. Louis Cardinals. And now, you know, here in Toronto, where they've always kind of deemed him as maybe the other or odd guy out. So let me ask you some questions, of course. Thank you for all of that. And uh, again, I'm, I'm trying to learn as we go along here. It's uh, Baseball 101 with Warren Saku and, of course, Paul Rosen. I look forward for next week when we get you on, bringing Paul in and really just talking about baseball. And we'll leave the hockey side out because I know we don't have as much time as we'd like to. But I do want to ask you some things. I'm watching the game, and, of course, I, I know a little bit. I shouldn't play this dumb role. I do know a little bit about baseball. But uh, the second baseman, Simeon and uh, Bichette, uh, uh, yeah. shortstop. I'm loving that. Obviously, turning the double plays, how athletic they are. Like they just, they're jumping for balls. They're catching balls that, you know, a lot of guys don't catch. Do you, and I heard you guys, you and Paul talk about the fact that these guys are so athletic and we've got a tremendous infield, but then added what Gridditch has done too. And, and the rest of the outfielders, I, I just think this looks like a very, Good ball club. Yes, it's early. Three and one. It could be in different, you know, going into Yankees land. You know, I, did anybody really give them uh, the thought that they were going to take those games? I didn't personally because 
I just heard all the rap, all the, you know, the Yankees have bought everybody again and they're just going to walk through it. Thoughts on all what I've just asked you. Yeah, well, first of all, the first time the Jays have won a three or four game series in New York uh, since 2018. So that's a nice milestone. Um, Simeon and, and uh, Bichette, first of all, when I looked at Simeon, I was looking at a, what I believed is a, uh, you know, a polished uh, major league infielder, shortstop pedigree. Uh, now being asked to uh, transition to second base. But, you know, you died behind a bit of the numbers. And with all the shifts that we've seen in baseball now where players are playing almost out of position, you know, they said he played somewhat uh, like, I don't know, 65% of his position was kind of over on the second base side. So it's not that difficult of a transition for him to make. So that's the first point. And, and I love his bat. I love what I'm seeing. I think he's another one of those players that's on a, you know, a one-year deal. He's got a lot to prove. You know, he's got an opportunity to, you know, either capitalize with the Jays or or take this and, and, and go and go out to the market again next year as a free agent. Um, I was a little concerned early with Bo at shortstop with the throwing. I watched him at the end of last year, and um, I don't know, something about the arm. I didn't like the throwing action. Um, I'm still not always enamored by it, but I think a lot has to do with his footwork. And you're right, he is very athletic. Uh, and, and and oftentimes when you're that athletic, you sometimes just allow your athleticism to play, uh, play for you. Now, you saw that double play where Simeon threw it, and he did the 360 twirl and, and, and oh. threw out the runner at uh, first base. Like, amazing play. That was um, amazing. Happy to see that he's actually, I'll call it the, you know, just making the routine play day in and day out. When you want your shortstop, what you want is, um, you know, solidity there. You just want them to make the everyday play. Yes, you'd love them to have the range, right? Range factor is a big thing at shortstop. You see, you know, the likes of an Andrew, Andrelton Simmons. These guys have phenomenal range, right? They can go get it deep in the hole, um, you know, from, from Bo. You know, he's not maybe going to be as athletic as some of those top, 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 you know, highly, highly athletic players. But his bat and his, you know, his bat to ball skills as well as his ability, his pedigree coming, you know, with his father, Dante, being a major leaguer. You can tell that nothing overwhelms him. I just want to make sure when I watch that arm that 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 action is consistent with a shortstop. I wouldn't be surprised, Gooch, and, and I called this out. I don't know if it's going to happen, but don't be surprised if you see a bit of a flip-flop. Simeon goes over to shortstop. I don't know if that means that they put Bouchette at uh, Bichette at second base, but if they're going to give him days off, I think what they would do, you know, move Cavan over to second base and move Simeon to shortstop. Um, you know, we'll see. Once again, it's early. You know, they're only, uh, what, uh, four or five games in here now uh, coming in to today. And, um, you know, I think it's nice to see that they've worked so hard. And Bichette talked about how hard they work together in spring training on the double play because there's nuances there as a shortstop moving over to second to make the turn with the footwork. But it's also where you want the throw as a second baseman. Where do you want the throw as a shortstop? Where do you like it? Do you like glove side? Do you want it on the inside? You know, and, and these are the things you just need to practice and get into some game yeah. coordination to make it happen. And you know what? It's it's paid off early. I can tell that. That's in any sport. Communication is key. Yeah. And that's you, you see they're having fun, too. Always better that they're three and one than one and three. Uh, but it, there's promise. Obviously, when you see a team come out like they have, you know, Guerrera, for example, uh, I, I, I see him. I, I visualize him from last year to this year. Yeah. The guy looks like a, a fit. You know, he looks like a rock star. And all of them do. Like Biggio, Bichette, they all look like movie stars, like Brad Pitts, for God's sakes. But they can play. And I really like that fact. Uh, before we talk about the back catching situation, obviously, Jensen, and then uh, I don't even know how to say his first name, but Kirk, uh, he, he looks like Alejandro. He kind of looks like the old... Uh, the old, old school uh, catchers, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, putting on the putting a little bit on the beef, but does it help that they get off to this start? You know, obviously the Yankees are were one of the teams that everybody was looking really hot upon, but you know they came in and as you said, won in in in, in uh, New York, uh, which is not that often. That's got to put some confidence. Yes. It's not winning the World Series right now, but it's certainly putting them in a position where they can have fun, get ready, that communication. They're going back to the hotels. They're able to have some fun at this particular moment with all this craziness around us. 
Yeah, I think there's a lot of confidence. There's no doubt that Bo, uh, that, uh, uh, Bo and Vladdy are, are uh, uh, very confident individuals. I think, uh, you know, they, they bring that just because of their fathers who have major league pedigree, Biggio as well. You start to, you know, infuse some of these veterans in and you bring a Springer who's been a uh, 2017 World Series MVP into the mix. That really helps a lot. I, I can tell you that, you know, this is the next level of maturing as an organization. You know, without getting ahead of ourselves, I want to see them go back to Dunedin because that's going to be the home ballpark for the first at least two home stands. Um, that is a launching pad, Gooch. Just want to see how this pitching, both starting pitching and relief uh, core does. Uh, in that ballpark down there, the I think it's the TD Canada Trust or TD Ballpark down in uh, Dunedin. Um, they've done an amazing job down there from my days of playing with the Blue Jays. They've really revamped not only, you know, the major league, but the minor league side. Uh, it's just, you know, that truly is a real launching pad. So we'll see, you know, if the TJ Zoigs can continue to bury that sinker down in the zone, get the ground balls. Uh, you know, if pitchers can, you know, keep that ball from elevating and, you know, in, in starting to get some of these cheap home runs. That'll be to me a bit of a, a determining factor early in the season. So let's get through this first month. I think once they get through that, I think they're going to transition to Buffalo. They know Buffalo. They used it as a home field advantage. I really think that will be the next stop on the journey. Love to see them get into the playoffs and one day be able to come back here to play at the Dome. As a season ticket holder, it'd be nice to be on the uh, front lines of getting in to see them play um, when that happens. But, you know, we'll keep our fingers crossed. No, no promises yet. But what, I want to see how they play in Dunedin. I want to see if it becomes a home field factor for them or a bit of a detriment. And then we know when they go to Buffalo, ultimately, which I, I firmly believe they will. I don't think they'll be coming back to Canada anytime soon and maybe not until the end of the season. Uh, yeah. How they continue to use that ballpark, which is – it is a pitcher friendly park. It is something that, um, you know, that they use to their advantage. And I think, you know, you know, the Yankees always kind of came in last year and, and griped and kind of moaned about the, uh, you know, AAA facilities. Well, you know, these guys didn't know much better, these young players, because, you know, that's all they knew was AA and AAA facilities. So, uh, you know, I'll, I'll liken to see, you know, over the next month, month and a half should be exciting to watch them play in both venues. Well, I'm going to talk to Paul and we'll get a day where we can have you on and we just talk all baseball because yeah. you're so in tune with it. Obviously, they're up against the Rangers. I want to go to the political parts of this, of course. I don't know if you watched fully the game last night, but I was kind of flipping back and forth uh, watching the Raptors win. Incredible. Watching uh, watching the upset, uh, it, somewhat of an upset. Baylor <laughs> winning the NCAA. Yeah. And then, of course, watching my Winnipeg. It was crazy. Right. And so what I did see is every time they, you know, threw a ball at the home plate, I could see behind them all of these boxes with 10, 15 people sitting around, no masks. Yeah. 40,000 people. I don't know how many masks. I couldn't count them all that quickly. Um, Joe Biden said it's disgusting. I think it's offside right now. I don't think we needed that picture for everybody to see because it just keeps this political bull out there right now guys we're in a pandemic let's be respectful of that it's great that we have baseball you can comment or not comment i understand we can get yeah, a no I, I don't mind commenting look at uh, there's teams like the you know washington nationals and the vancouver canucks that are going through you know covid's hit their whole team uh you know i it's Texas, you know, Baylor Bears are from Texas, boy, you you see, you know, the head coach talked about winning one for Texas, you know, it's everything's bigger uh, in Texas, there's no doubt. And um, <laughs> listen, I, I, I wouldn't use them as the model of, uh, you know, kind of um, the moral compass or the model for all of us to follow because, you know, well, I'm Canadian, I'm a little more conservative, and I think we, you know, we have a duty uh, to be respectful for others, not just for us, it's for others. And uh, you know, I think part of that is selfishness, honestly, I really do. And uh, you know, they're, they're free to do what they want. It's, uh, you know, it's America, land of the free, right? You know, we do what we want, but you know, what about the consideration for others? You know, it's not just all about jamming people in, and yeah, you've got, you know, a new ballpark, but it's not all about that. It's about other things too. And you're right. It's not a great message, but it's a message that they want to project out and uh, you know, their ownership and their, their leadership of their, of their state have done it. And, and COVID is state to state, uh, you know, in the U S yes. uh, you know, it's a different reaction. And don't forget too, 
I will hand it to the Americans, and this was back even when you know Trump was there. They put a military task force behind the deployment of COVID nineteen. I watched one of the sixty minutes talking about you know a military general running, you know the deployment of of COVID nineteen vaccines. They they know how to run military. They know how to run precision military. It's not surprising that they can deploy. In order to, and they also have the assets, right? They have the money to be able to throw yeah, against it. So more than we do, right? More than we do. So I hope that well, we, we we learn from deploying and, and also that we need to take care of our own people here. We need to make our own vaccine in the future because, you know, there will be another version of COVID-19 down the road. There's no doubt there yeah. will be. I just hope we're better prepared and we can deploy faster. Well, I can say for all you out there, I did get my shot. I went through the proper channels, no no specialty or anything like that. I'm 60, went online. It was, un, I've got to say how fluid it was. I got on in the morning. I had 48 spots to pick from on that same day. I picked one. It took me three minutes to go get registered while I was in this lineup. There was no lineup, sorry, but I walked in. Everybody happy, everybody unbelievable. By the time I was registered, I was in a chair, needle in my arm. The, the doctor that uh, performed it was unbelievable, made me feel comfortable, sat down in my chair for 15 minutes. 25 minutes, I was in and out, and here we go. So I just hope everybody that, that believes in the vaccine, please, please get it. It's going to help us all yep. get back to some normality, and, of course, that'll mean uh, big-time baseball. All right, before I let you go, obviously, they're in Texas again tonight. Um uh, and then they're moving on to the Angels. What do you see yeah. over the next, before we get you on the next show with Paul and we can really get deep into it, uh, what do you see over the next week? <laughs> hey, no reason, uh, you know, listen, no reason this team can't uh, sweep in Texas, uh, of course. Uh, tonight it's Tanner uh, Roark against Dunning. Um, obviously, Roark's got a lot to prove. You know, he's been a National League pitcher. He's in here now. Hasn't had a winning record, actually hasn't won a game in Texas, but wins and losses are a team number in baseball. Absolutely. He does have a nice, he does have a nice, uh, you know, sub four ERA against the Rangers career. Uh, so, uh, you know, looking for him to, to once again, you know, have this kind of uh, proving ground for himself. I've been watching the Angels, boy. You know, they're electric. I just want to let everyone know, if you don't watch the late games, I've been watching Shohei Otani and Mike Trout and, and uh, you know, the team, uh, you know, in in, um, in L.A. Oh, man, they're they're exciting right now. They they beat up on the White Sox. I watched them win last night again. You know, they're, they're playing some really, really good baseball. Uh, they played the Astros. It was kind of come from behind uh, affair. Um I tell you, nothing better than watching guys throw 100 miles per hour and then step up to the plate and hit 450-foot home runs. The Shohei Otani is just a, he's a special individual. And if anybody knows baseball, like, you, you know, when you get to watch Mike Trout, you're watching, you know, first ballot, I would say, um, you know, maybe um, uh, unanimous uh, first ballot Hall of Famer in Mike Trout. Uh, you know, this will be, <laughs> this is where I'm saying, uh, Gooch, when they go back to uh, down to Dunedin, let's see, uh, let's see how the Angels are playing when they come in and see if those bats are still pretty electric uh, when they go down to Dunedin and play the Jays. Not to say the Jays bats aren't, but that'll be a true test on this pitching staff down in Dunedin. We have been talking to the mighty Q. Warren Sack, you can't thank enough. Uh, Shane, thanks for joining us. Uh, always a pleasure having you guys with us, of course. And Warren, I just love, it's its almost like poetry when you're on with us. The way you talk and you just, it flows and it's a great, you're a great storyteller and I love it. Yeah, can't wait well, to get you, you and me and Paul on there. Uh, I'm a rookie, so I'm, I'm, I'm catching up. So thank yeah, you. Warren, there, there, yes, you are. And always thank you for being a part of our show. It makes us, All right. it almost makes me look good. <laughs> Keep that hair flowing. I love it, Gooch. See you, Thanks buddy. All right, buddy. See ya. Hey, always a pleasure to have him on. Don't forget at 4 o'clock, we've got the Rosen Report, and I'm really, really looking forward to having Warren back. Look at poetry in motion. No question. Sean, it's been way too long. Love to hook up one day, buddy. You are an amazing individual out in Ottawa. I look forward to catching up with you very, very soon. And listen, we're going to do a wrap-up. I'm going to bring up the two producers. Assistant producer, of course, Jordan has been Absolutely phenomenal working with me on a daily basis. But Val, I'll tell you what, him doing the juggling act, getting everybody taken care of, doing all the all the different things that we need for the show, executive producer, been fantastic. So we'll wrap it up with a little bit of a producer's 
edition. All right, here we go. What's going on, guys? Hey, guys. I, know, I, I, I too want to thank Jordan for filling in uh, for me. It's been a bit of a whirlwind. I too have been getting my parents uh, vaccinated. I don't know if that sounds right, but I want to thank Jordan for all the hard work he's done. I really appreciate it. Thank you guys. It means a lot. Yeah, you know what? And and uh, what, what's really cool is that Jordan's coming out of school, obviously, and you know he's an intern right now. But I can honestly say that this kid has gone above and beyond. So thank you, Jordan, for that. And I really look forward to you got some cool news. We're getting your dad and your buddies in Hong Kong to join our show. Talk to us a little bit about that quickly. Yeah, so it's uh, we're, we're talking oh, to them right oh, now. But oh, oh, breaking news! Breaking news! Oh. Yeah, Apple Fitter was picked up. No. Taylor Hall has been scratched for the game against the Devils tonight. How, really? Shouldn't they have done? Shouldn't they have not done that a while ago? No, for the yeah, true. And they're saying it's uh, about the trade deadline. Sorry, Jordan. Gooch live. We just want to be able to. I bet you we beat ESPN. All right, Jordan, go again. Sorry. Yeah. So Chris Ivany and Paul McLean, they're some of the people who we're talking to as well. Uh, they run a pretty successful podcast in Hong Kong. Um, it's a hockey podcast, but they are based in Hong Kong. They're two Canadian guys from Nova Scotia, but they've been there probably five, ten years now. So they know a lot about the local hockey scene. They do a lot of the KHL covering the Kunlun Red Star as well. Um, so they're really interesting guys to talk to. And then my dad as well, who was involved in Hong Kong hockey my whole life growing up and a little bit after I left too. But you know, you get different perspectives from different hockey places around the world. It's, it's really interesting to see. Well, we've got after, uh, actually Matthew Meisner, of course, and we've got our, you know, people around the globe that we get a chance to talk to. Uh, obviously, New Zealand, Australia, Germany, China. This is really exciting for us that we can bring a different perspective. Really quickly, Jordan, I don't know if you know, Val, but this kid has played in a lot of countries. He's a goalie, a real goalie. He's a goalie, and he's played around. Where's, what the, are you dis where's the disclaimer? I wasn't suggesting you weren't. Paul would be all over that. I love you, Paul. All right, Jordan, tell us, like he's been, he's played in a bunch. Tell us some of the countries you played in. Amazing. Uh, well, for starters, Hong Kong, of course, uh, Thailand, Japan, China, uh, Australia, Switzerland, Germany, Austria, Italy, um, uh, Malaysia. Um, I've been all throughout China to play too, so. Uh, hockey's uh, kind of like you, Carrie. It's been it's been my passport to the world. So, yeah. uh, I'm, I'm I'm grateful for the opportunities I've had, and it's been an incredible an incredible story so far. So that's why Jordan, uh, we are as we mentioned, uh, Val's just working on the logo. Uh, we're doing uh, in this latest hockey news. We're very blessed that we've got a story about the Gooch, and it's called "My Skates Are My Passport to the World." I'm honored to have had that written. Uh, of course, uh, our friend Scott Taylor was a big part of it. Val, you were amazing getting it all set up. It'll be in this next. Um, hockey news but what's important about that is jordan has agreed to actually help me put these memoirs on paper because he has traveled the world he does know there's a really cool experience out there that people don't even know so if i don't mind just before we finish off with all the nhl stuff what's the coolest rink you've been at whether it's indoor or outdoor what would be you just say holy crap i'm playing hockey here uh it, it's gotta be davos in switzerland uh, uh I don't that's, care if you, that's if you always the top pick yeah yeah where, where the spangler cups played every year it's a beautiful rank old city wow. beautiful town too uh we, we, we had to walk from the, the rink to the hotel and back so it was a little hike through the mountains it was beautiful i i 100 go back there all right the craziest one that you've been to when do you <laughs> say this shouldn't even be a rink um probably i mean I, probably hong kong honestly <laughs> Yeah. Um, but, but my, my home rank, uh, mega, uh, it's called mega ice. It's in a big shopping mall in Hong Kong. Um, it's on the 10th floor. Yeah. Um, it, it's the only uh, HL size rank in Hong Kong, but I mean, having an ice ring on the 10th floor of a, of a building with a massive window overlooking the Hong Kong, uh, s s uh skyline is just incredible, but it, it, it's a little weird to think about. <laughs> So we still, you as producers, you know, I've given you a, a call out. I want to do the NHL jerseys, the third jerseys, how beautiful some of those are. 
not. And then the other thing I think we should do is try and pick some of the craziest places rinks around the world are. I, you know, obviously we've got Matthew down there, but one, two of that I'll really quickly give you. One was in Ravensburg. The bus drove up this mountain, landed in the parking lot. We all got out. We went into the dress room. It was open, open air. One side had fans. The other one, if the puck had a rolled, gone over the boards, it would have rolled down a thousand feet because it was on the side of a mountain. Like, that's crazy. And then I can't remember the city, but I will uh, pull this out. Two of them, one Brock Vader, uh, we were playing, it was an outdoor rink in Germ middle of Germany. I was flying home the next day. Uh, it was Christmas time, so I was coming back to Toronto. All of a sudden, the, the, the ground started shaking and it started to snow. It was beautiful. And the, the, the ice started shaking and then all of a sudden, shoo, on the one side, it was right up against the track. So the ice train sped along. It was just holy mackerel. to think if it would have derailed, it would have taken us all of it. And we did play in a place. It was a, it was a grocery store. And we were on the second floor of a grocery store. And we had to go up the freight elevator to get to the, it was just bizarre some of the places we played. So thank you for sharing that with us, Jordan. And Val, I think your only one would be Moss Park. No, actually, you know what? My my comparison would be to a lot of uh, football fields in Europe that I visited, and some crazy ones. So that, those are my experience. I've got there's a there's a great one in my home country where they ripped out a mountain and be uh, they ripped the mountain apart in the center, and uh, they put a soccer field in there, which was used for one of the uh, European Championship games in 2004. So take it to Europe. You don't have enough space. You just can't go to a field. You got to take it, tear down a mountain. All right, let's get into the NHL. Obviously uh, you guys brought up the fact that Caden Primo has been called up. I noticed that uh, Paul had said, no, uh, he's been called up, but he's on the taxi squad. If you don't mind, do you know that? Or uh, because is Carey Price out? No, Carey, Carey Price actually left the uh, game early uh, in the second period against Edmonton the other day. Uh, I think they're, they've called Caden up. Yeah, it's currently on the taxi quad. I think okay. Car Car uh, Carey Price will just be reevaluated, but most likely than not, once they confirmed it, it, it does seem like that uh, uh, Caden will be backing up Jake Allen in the game in Montreal. So we're uh, in Toronto against the Leafs on Thursday. Sorry, Wednesday. Sorry, I'm yeah today. Um, I'm, a little, I'm a little off because I've been running around the past week. So my apologies. So Montreal, hey, take a visit breath. Take a breath. Let's see you take a breath. Montreal okay. visits Toronto on Wednesday. Caden is most likely going to back up Jake Allen against that game for him. So shut up, shut up. So oh, you just ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's uh, let's talk a little bit about Caden Primo. Of course, we're we're honored that he's on. I know that Jordan, you pulled up some stats on him. He's playing well down below. Yeah, down below in Laval. It's across the street, actually. I shouldn't say down below because I'm always thinking AHL. All of them are in the states, but in Laval. Of course, he's put up some pretty good numbers. Yeah, I mean, uh, a 207 goals against and a 911 save percentage. I, that's, that's nothing to deny at, but I mean, it's it's respectable for sure. It's 14 games played, so you know it's a good it's a good uh, measuring stick right at this particular moment. And last year, you know, he only played a couple of games, but he still uh, he won. He lost one, won one. If I'm not mistaken, his stats are not out of the realm either. Yeah, and he, he, and even before that, he came out of Northeastern, which is uh, they play in the Hockey East, which is a loaded division with a lot of really good schools like Boston College, Boston University. Yep. So I mean, they were they ranked ninth that year in the country. He had two hundred nine goals against and a nine thirty three save percentage. He was one of the top goalies in the country that year. So I mean, yep. I, I don't see why you can't bring that up to the NHL. Yeah, Kane, good pedigree is there. Ranked Kane is ranked the top Montreal uh, Canadiens uh, depth chart really high. So he is looks to be the next one moving forward into the main team once uh, they're ready to bring him up on a full-time basis. Couldn't ask for a better teacher than Carey Price, I'll tell you. And uh, we we could uh, debate whether or not he's going to go or ever go. I think Carey Price ends up staying in Montreal for a long time. And what a better – you can't ask for a better teacher. All right, you heard, uh, obviously, the breaking news. I threw it out there. Uh, let's talk about that. Obviously, this next week is going to be very important. Obviously, there's not a lot of people that are going to be looking at some of the trade-worthy players that are in Vancouver. That obviously is not going to be touched. Yeah. Uh, because it's just a short period of time. So then it opens up the market. And I was thinking of Tanner Pearson, for example. You know, there's a great player that you could steal out of there, not having great numbers this year, but certainly could do some damage on another team. Uh, I, I have to throw this out there. 
Uh, I think Paul and I were the same agreement. I'm not sure if you were, Val. I think you were when I said, wow, Eric Stoll going to Montreal yeah. is going to be dynamite. And man, does he not just knock a home run out, using an analogy for baseball. Knock a, what a great goal in a, in, a, in a clutch situation. They needed that extra point. It's only an extra point, but it really starts moving them one point ahead of where they can catch Winnipeg or even Edmonton uh, for third or, you know, because I don't think you want to end up in fourth and end up playing my Winnipeg Jets. Yeah, the uh, Eric Stahl adds a, a face-off man for the Montreal Canadiens who are big on winning face-offs, and they needed the help. So Eric Stahl will help the Montreal Canadiens win a lot more face-offs and more puck possession when it comes to on the power play and on the uh, offensive zone. So that, like, I think we all were in the same agreement. It was a great pickup for Montreal. I mean, Eric was happy to uh, play last night, his uh, post, post-game post conference. He was like, I can't wait to have fans in the stadium once it's all clear because it is yeah. one of those traditional markets where the fans are, are knowledgeable and, and just enjoy the game. And it's an original six team. So it was a very good sleeper pick trade that uh, Pierre Bergeron made for Montreal for sure. Well, he's really doing a number. Hopefully they, you know, obviously they're going to make the playoffs. If they can go deep in the playoffs, all of his moves have certainly paid off. And Josh Anderson, I'm still so impressed with what he's doing for Montreal. I did, uh, obviously Gallagher uh, took a slap shot, broke his thumb. So it looks like he may be out for uh, a couple of weeks or, or longer. Broken thumbs are tough to come back from. What's really cool about, what's really good about that, Jordan, it looks Bergevin looks like a genius right now. Obviously having, you know, Corey Perry, uh, you know, Frolux there. Also, he's got some really wily veterans to go upon. And I think also when you look at what the Montreal Canadiens have done that by bringing Stahl in, and Stahl's not 100% sure he wanted to go to Montreal. Uh, I talked to Malcolm Sutherland. He made that clear that they're from Thunder Bay, and he heard the rumors that, you know, he's kind of tentative on it. Man, he set himself up for a perfect – it's only one game, very small sample size. But I'll tell you what, he, he not only looked good in the, obviously, in the overtime, uh, but they also put him on the first power play. So they gave him a christening. And if he can continue on contributing like he does, uh, I think they're going to go deep in the playoffs by adding players like that. Yeah, I, I think he, he really meshes well with the current identity of their team. You know, they, they don't really have many guys who will go out and score 30, 40 plus goals a year. So I think just having another guy that is happy to, to battle it out, happy to, to, to scramble for pucks, uh, use his body a little bit, it's, he's going to fit in really well with that team. Yeah, and I also think him coming from the situation that was happening in Buffalo, constantly losing, and, and Stahl is a veteran. And then going to Montreal, and there's a, win, there's a winning mentality and something to play for. So that'll perk anybody up coming from one team to the other one. Obviously, uh, we'll get really quickly into the uh, – any any other comments outside of – I know we've talked about the Toronto Maple Leafs. I have made a public apology to James, uh, <laughs> even though, uh, you know, with Matthews, I kind of was downtrodden on him. He looked like the, he looked like the leader that we needed. But uh, – and breaking news, breaking news, they scored a power play goal. <laughs> because of Zach Hyman being brought up to the power play uh, last night. Absolutely. Hey, listen, uh, tonight, Pittsburgh Rangers, of course, that's a big one for you, Jordan. It's an important, obviously, matchup. Uh, you know, it's tight. We talked about that the other day. Uh, Buffalo's up against Devils, not certainly anything we need to worry about. Washington Capitals against the Islanders. These are all four-point games that really can change things in the standings. Boston against the Flyers is a big one. Uh, but the one I'm really looking forward to is, of course, uh, the one with Tampa Bay against Blue Jackets. And you'd say, why? Yeah. Well, your Tampa Bay Lightnings or your Detroit Red Wings beat the Tampa Bay Lightnings. And it, it was a sound beating. It was not just a fluke. It was a 5-1 win and full marks to all, to all the, uh, the Detroit Red Wings. But Tampa seemingly on kind of a question mark right now. Everybody's picking Colorado to be kind of the favorite right now. I think Tampa Bay wants to make a statement. And the lowly Blue Jackets right at this moment, they are struggling. They're on a free fall. And what what we've talked about it, the tort situation, Liney looks dis, disinterested. Rosnovich that was a healthy scratch. Anybody knows what's – is there anything, any scoops that have come out of Columbus right now? Uh, nothing that I've seen uh, at least the last day or two, no. I mean, could, could the uh, tag – 
the tag around uh, Liney's neck be true, where the dude just doesn't, uh, I don't want to say doesn't care half the time, but in Winnipeg, the performance wasn't there. In Columbus, the performance isn't there. And if this is a kid that wants to be paid as a number one player in the NHL, like 15 million uh, a season, he's not making a great case for himself right at the moment, right? Yeah. All right. In closing, we'll go right off to uh, obviously San Jose's up against uh, Arizona tonight or Anaheim. I'm sorry. Uh, really crucial. Uh, we almost wrote off the San Jose Sharks. We kind of said they had no chance. They're in a good position to catch Arizona, so they can't let any of these games go at this particular moment. I think Doug Wilson, who was inducted to the Hockey Hall of Fame this year, hasn't had his ceremonies right now. It would be horrific if the San Jose Sharks don't make the playoffs because they're going to have a decision, guys. Are they are they going to be a rebuild? they got a bunch of old guys, as we know. They've got a great, talented front four. Uh, front three, sorry. So if anybody concerned in San Jose, if they lose to the, the, the Anaheim uh, organization, that could put them back again. And uh, seemingly they've got two games in hand over Arizona and only four games back, five games, sorry, five points back. Anybody thinking anything? I, I think if if they don't do much in playoffs this year, they should probably go towards a rebuild and kind of blow up the whole team. I mean, they were they were one of the oldest rosters in the NHL. I think they're in the bottom five. So I mean, like, where do you where do you where do they really go from here? Well, some big t big big ticket contracts to move, of course. You know, with Carlson and Carlson, there was a quote coming up from him saying, "I didn't come here for a rebuild." Right. So if there's going to be a rebuild, they're going to have to look at him. Is is Brent Burns going to be happy with a rebuild? You know, that, that's where you know those are big ticket numbers. Yeah, but nobody, nobody, no NHL player goes into playing into a season playing for a rebuild, right? If your team needs to be revamped, like Jordan says, they're one of the oldest rosters in the league. Doug Wilson does have to look to make his team better because they are currently, like you said, Kerry, they're they're currently fighting for a uh, fourth spot with uh, Phoenix. I mean, Phoenix has been on a tear. They basically uh, destroyed uh, the LA Kings last night, and yep, uh, there's there's, really there's rumblings of the players not even being happy. They're they're like shooting themselves in the foot at, in LA. But they, they've even, like, San Jose's surpassed on the standings that I can see St. Louis. St. Louis has been on a downslide, too. But if San Jose gets into the playoffs, is just 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 a uh, quick Band-Aid for the season and prolonging the, the uh, rebuild or, or to uh, uh, appease Carlson, the retooling of the club, I think Doug Wilson yeah. does need to revamp this roster. All right, guys, can't thank you enough uh, being on Lunch with Gooch and Friends. Really excited about today, tonight at 4 o'clock with Paul Rosen. He's got Dan Boleyn. Do not miss it. Paul has been bringing up some incredible guests, and this one you're not going to want to miss. Hey, listen, guys, thank you for all that you do. It's been a fantastic day. Obviously, having Waring Saku, can't wait to get him. I just love it. He's poetry in motion about baseball. Look forward to having him and Paul go at it, and I'll just throw I'll throw the little darts to get them started. All right, guys, thank you for watching. You've been watching Gooch Live right here, brought to you by the good people at the Hockey News and Sports Illustrated. See you, everyone. Have a good night. You've been listening to Gooch Live with your host, Kerry Goulet, better known as The Gooch, brought to you by the Hockey News and Sports Illustrated.